Good morning. And welcome. I am Pastor Jonathan Vogel on behalf of Debbie and Paul's brother Dave. It is good to welcome all of us, whether we are here in person, in the parking lot, or on Zoom, as we gather in worship of our Lord and Savior and in celebration of Paul Bartel's life. A couple of announcements and uh, important sharings, perhaps the most important, at least for those of us here in the sanctuary, the bathrooms are through these doors and down the hall to the right. All are invited following our service to continue our time together, again in person. Please join us in the fellowship hall for a time of continued sharing. For those on Zoom, uh, Bonnie will continue to uh, host that meeting, at least for a period of time, and to allow you to be able to meet and visit with one another. A word about communion. Some years ago, uh, St. Andrew spent time in prayer and discernment and determined that it was appropriate for those on Zoom to also gather or to be with us in communion, trusting that we are indeed gathered through God's Holy Spirit and the power of modern technology. So I know for many of you on Zoom, it will be short notice, but if you would like to uh, Bring together either a bit of bread and wine, perhaps a cracker and grape juice. As I elevate the elements here at St. Andrew, you would be invited to lift those as well and then to commune either yourselves or one another. We are gathered this day for a number of reasons. We are gathered to give thanks to God for the gift of Paul Bartels for his strengths, the blessing he was to us, and even for his stubbornness and those things that drove us a little crazy at times, because they were all part of God's gift to us in Paul. We are gathered as well to share our grief and our joy with one another, for whether our memories of Paul bring tears at this time or laughter, that is part of as well of God's gift to us in him. And so we are gathered to be together as those who loved Paul, those who love Christ, to comfort and reassure one another. And we are finally gathered to hear again the promises of new life that we have received through our Lord Jesus Christ in his victory over sin and death. For whether we make it through the doors of the church on a regular basis or only occasionally or perhaps less than that, it is good at such times to hear again those words of promise and hope. They are what continue to bring us hope and strength in our lives. Will those who are able, please rise. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in, the sor in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Come on up here, girl. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We sing our hymn.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Paul Bartels. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated. first reading today is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to release the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all those who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint heart, faint spirit. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm number 121, and it will be spoken responsively. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. And the second reading today is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Do you not know? that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, then we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever is, has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, then we believe that we will also live with him we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Those who are able, please rise. A gospel reading selected for this day is from the 11th chapter of John. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews who had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brothers. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace be with you during this time of loss, through the power of the Holy Spirit, from God our Father, and from our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a quote attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. Preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. A statement which reminds us that faith, that God's love can be shared through the spoken word, but that far greater power lies in doing so through action and through music. Paul Bartel's life was all of that the power of music, and that of supporting and caring for one another through action. Certainly that of faith and love of God. One of the things I learned as Debbie and I talked about today <clears throat> was that she and Paul met through church choir. Does that surprise any of us? <laughs> Debbie had just joined the choir. They were doing a Bach cantata. What else? <laughs> Paul was doing the solo. Who else? Paul had been playing the violin and singing in concerts and choirs and barbershop quartets since he was a small boy. That was enough for Debbie to seek a connection. Many others were soon discovered. Both moms had died the year before. Both loved the Columbia symphony and and the Ohio State Buckeyes. <laughs> Both had long before found their home in the Lutheran Church. Both had found that while conversation was good, Companionable silence 
was also a great blessing, a rare gift for any couple. It was a match made literally in heaven. A reading from Isaiah 61 this morning talks about comforting all who mourn, comforting those who grieve. We cannot this morning think there was anything right or fair in our loss of Paul. The path of his cancer from diagnosis to death in three months. We can understandably join with Martha in crying out, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. We would be less than human if in the midst of illness and death we did not wonder about God's love and presence. Yes, by Christ's victory over sin and death, we do not need to fear that death has the final word, but God fully understands our grief at the loss of a loved one. Our pain in watching the struggle of another our fear, and even our anger at the passing of all that could have been, all that should have been. God does not leave us alone in our grief. Christ's promise is that God grieves with us in our loss. We also have the comfort of one another, family and friends, loved ones, sisters and brothers in Christ, that together we might remind ourselves and each other that we have strength, we have hope, and we have work yet to do in this world. We have the example Paul set before us through his actions, through his love of music, and yet, even at times, his words. Whether that was taking care of Debbie when she became sick right after their engagement, taking his brother Dave to a Pink Floyd concert or sharing with his students through the years his love of learning and his determination to take on the challenges of this world or the support he provided to staff and customers at Bar Harbor Cellars and to members and friends here at St. Andrew. One of my own favorite memories of Paul was when we led our first worship assistant workshop here. Talk about precision. Worship assist assistants will stand here during this part of the liturgy. You will move here immediately after. When leading the offertory prayer, you hold your hands this way. <laughs> Indeed. Always nice when the pastor doesn't have to be the rule giver. <laughs> but it was abundantly clear, too, that such care and attention to detail was out of Paul's understanding that God came first. And that service to God's people was a sacred calling. Paul, 
the apostle, reminds us, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might live a new life. Paul, our Paul, now knows the fullness of this promise. Not just the life redeemed by Christ that we shared with Paul on this earth for all too short a time, but the complete life that God originally intended for all of us, free from suffering, from struggle, from sin and death for all of eternity. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? Our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Until that time comes when all of us are gathered together again in the limitless glory of God's eternity. Let us find our comfort and our peace in the strength of God's promises. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Hear us. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the grave and the gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Yes. Yes, Lord. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Yes, Lord. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Yes, Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow, sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Yes, Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those that they love. Yes, Lord. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things that we cannot understand, to believe and to trust in the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Yes. Grant us grace to entrust Paul to your never-failing love, which sustained him in this life. Receive, them, receive him into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor that you bear for your people. Yes. God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that because by his death Jesus destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also and that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. After the crucifixion and death of Jesus, the disciples gathered in locked doors out of fear of what, what might be. Jesus' first words to, to them, appearing resurrected, were, Peace be with you. As people of God and people of faith, we have been given that gift of peace and the ability to share it with one another. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I share a sign of God's peace with one another, with horns in our parking lot, and with chat on Zoom. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace all. Peace all. Peace, everybody. Blessings to you each. Peace, Don. Peace, Brutal. Peace, everybody. Peace, Pastor Peggy. Peace, Wendy. <laughs> Peace, Christina. So good to have you here with us all. Ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we knew we weren't going to have offering this day, but one of the things that normally happens at St. Andrew is the communion elements are brought forward during offering. So we will do that at this point. For those who are able, please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bounds of death, and on this day, as he had promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples. At this, the whole earth exults in boundless joy, and so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. 
We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites you to this table. Come, eat, and live. Congregation may be seated.
didn't think of her, did we? Nope. And maybe we don't want to purchase a YouTube channel. in our parking lot and on Zoom receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ broken and shed for you. Receive the body of Christ.
congregation may remain seated. And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts, strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we command your servant, Paul J. Bartels. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace into the glorious company of the saints in light. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and powerful, by the death and burial of Jesus, your anointed, you have destroyed the power of death and made holy the resting places of all your people. Keep our brother Paul, whose body we lay to rest in the company of all your saints. And at the last, O oh God, raise him up to share with all the faithful the endless joy and the peace won through your glorious resurrection of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Following our hymn and the dismissal, uh, Debbie and Debbie has selected a uh, beautiful postlude and Daniel has worked to prepare to provide that for us. You are invited either to remain for that time here in the sanctuary of meditation and receiving that music uh, or to gather in the fellowship hall for conversation and uh, mutual care and support. Let us rise as we sing our hymn. Excuse me.
us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen.
Thank you.